May 12th saw the release of Capone, Josh Trank's comeback movie, and what he told Polygon he considers his first real movie. On the previous two movies, there was so much involvement and interference from other parties that he doesn't consider them to count. Capone, however, is all his and Tom Hardy's. So how does it measure up? In this editorial, I will give my spoiler-free review of Capone before going through Josh Trank's final shocking revelation of why he acted out the way he did in the aftermath of Chronicle. And finally, give my thoughts on how Capone might influence his career going forward. With one asterisk, Capone is the first movie where Trank had complete creative control, in that it was based on a script he wrote, and that he could direct however he saw fit, without any real interference from anyone, as long as Tom Hardy agreed with it. That's the one asterisk I was talking about, because this is a Tom Hardy vehicle which happens to be directed by Josh Trank. Not a Josh Trank production that happened to star Tom Hardy, and would be made with or without him. Trank wrote the script and approached Hardy yes, but without Hardy there would be no funding and therefore no movie. Tom Hardy and Josh Trank were in agreement about what kind of movie to make, and the budget was too low for any studio to demand detailed oversight. As long as Trank stuck to what he agreed with Tom Hardy to do, he would be free to make the movie he wanted within those parameters. By all accounts, Trank refrained from repeating the antics he is rumored to have engaged in on the set of the Fantastic Four. So production went through without any issues of note this time around. Trank owes Hardy big time for bailing him out of Director's Jail. Because without Hardy, Director's Jail would have been Trank's permanent address within Hollywood. Hardy was probably sympathetic towards him though, as he had his own brush with a genre movie that didn't quite work out too well for him, and he vetted Trank pretty well to make sure they were on the same page before proceeding. And proceed they did. So how did that work out? Before moving on to the review itself, I feel it should be stressed again that this is a Tom Hardy vehicle, meaning it is an opportunity for him to grow and shine as an actor. That means there is an increased focus on the subtleties of the performance and on interpretation and non-verbal communication, rather than on telling you, the viewer, a straightforward linear narrative and an entertaining story. The movie assumes you already know the story of Al Capone, his rise to power and fall on a technicality, because you won't get much retelling of that here. Here, the focus is on his undignified end and the final year of his life. What I'm saying is that like the last time Tom Hardy played a real-life criminal in a vehicle meant to showcase his talent as an actor, you will be better off going in already having learned the basics of the titular character. That way, you will get much more out of the movie. I'd even go so far as to say that if you haven't done that research in advance, this could struggle to hold your attention, which I think may be part of the reason why it has fared so poorly with professional reviewers overall. Now, let's see how it fared with me. In short, the movie is alright. It's not as abstract as Bronson, it's not as linear and informative as Stander, and it's not as entertaining as Chopper. And overall, it's not as good as any of those three either. But even so, those are the movies this belongs in the same breath as, and that is good company to be in. If you are familiar with and enjoy those movies, then Capone is for you. I say that because I am familiar with and enjoy those movies, and I actually got some enjoyment out of Capone. But I get that seems to be a minority view, and even I have some issues with it. As always, Tom Hardy is great, although, like many other actor-driven vehicles, it is a bit indulgent at times. The real weak spots, though, are in my opinion, Trank's script and direction. That is not to say that things are all bad, the movie does after all belong in the same breath as Bronson, Stander and Chopper. But in my opinion, Capone isn't all it could be. Even with the same story, 
I think it could have been a better movie in the hands of a more experienced director. After Chronicle, Trank was hyped as the best thing since Spielberg. Now, two movies later, it is clear that this was all hype. He is no Spielberg. In my view, Josh Trank is right now just a serviceable director. But if he finds his voice as a filmmaker, I think he has the potential to become a great director. He has a ways to go yet, but I believe that with Capone, Trank may be finding his voice as a filmmaker, for despite its flaws, I certainly consider Capone to be his best movie to date. Whatever you may feel about biographical movies that restrict themselves to one aspect of a person's life, this material is a better fit with Trank's sensibilities as a filmmaker than anything else he has put out so far. Comic book movies are clearly not for him, and he should never venture near one ever again. Original movies like this is where he can make his mark, and where he can be as subversive as he wants. The central theme of this movie is losing one's mind, and no longer knowing what is real and what is not. This is, in my opinion, also the one aspect of the movie where Trank did best, and it is a general theme he may be well suited to further refine in future projects. Because as it turns out, this is something he knows all too well. Trank has been giving interviews left and right in conjunction with the release of Capone, and in most cases, these have repeated or further elaborated on what was already in the Polygon piece, which I went through in the previous Trank video. However, in a one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff, buried in between everything else, Trank dropped something of a bombshell that incredibly almost no one picked up on. It was like all of my dreams came true at once. Um, but at the same time, I like there were a lot of things that it, uh, I, I was trying to process. And, you know, one of them I haven't really talked about, but, you know, it is what it is. And I think it's important for people to just sort of like, you know, just deal with it in their own way. I mean, there was a certain amount of um, uh, when I was much younger, around five or six, um, the sexual abuse that I, I had dealt with when I was a little kid. Um, that at that point in my life, I, when I was in therapy, um, I hadn't, I hadn't talked about out loud, but it yeah. was something that I just sort of, um, pushed down inside of me. In case you missed that, Josh Trank just admitted to being subjected to abuse of the sexual variety when he was a child. Later on, he says he repressed memories of this for years and didn't quite know if it was real or not. But just as Chronicle became a hit, this all emerged in therapy, which he evidently was getting, but the revelation brought everything crashing down. That's when he took up punching walls, which as someone pointed out, is better than punching random passerbys. But it's still not something you should be doing. There are some men out there whose hands will come out victorious in hand versus wall encounters, and many of them would be good subjects for future movies. But they are the exception and not the rule, so don't punch walls. Be that as it may, at the same time as Trank's inner world came crashing down, he was the hottest director in town, and he had to take all sorts of meetings and decide future projects even though he mentally wasn't fit for it at that particular point in time. What happened to Trank is awful, I wouldn't wish it upon anyone, and it does serve to explain his attitude and off behavior in the aftermath of Chronicle. But how messed up is that? The one time he is hot in Hollywood, a million in one shot, that far fewer than one in a million people will ever experience and that many far more deserving will never get. But Trank got that shot, and the one time he had to be sharp and on top of everything. He wasn't mentally up for it, and evidently not surrounded by people or agency who could help steer him right, and away from a rights grab like Fantastic Four. I hope Josh Trank is doing okay, and that he will get more opportunities to do smaller scale movies such as this. This is where he can redeem himself and make worthwhile contributions to cinema. If he gets to further hone his craft, Josh Trank may still become something closer to the director he was once hyped as being. 
Let me know your take on Capone and Trank's final reveal in the comments. And come back soon for my view on another auteur, namely Robert Pattinson, who evidently thinks himself too good to pump iron for a role like Batman.